What's going on lads? What's the crack? And welcome back. It's Monday. We've got new epics. We've got Baggio, Roycard and Ambrosini. These are part of the Italian League midfielders. And of course we've got the rest of the players in here. Now straight off the rip, I'm probably not going to do too much of an in-depth review on these guys. I mean Guendouzi, uh, Kustic. There's a couple of players in here that will do it for you. If you're kind of starting off mid-game to kind of starting off. If you do decide to spin and in your pursuit of Roycard or Baggio. Or even Ambrosini who's the weakest of the bunch but still an absolute monster we'll get into him in a second um if you do get do any of these guys in pursuit of the tree and you don't want to go super super deep um there's some okay players in here you know we can just throw you up a couple on the screen here i'll just hide my face cam that is kind of like one of the players here Gwendouzi. you've also have benacer and you have Kustic, who I think you can pause the video on the three of those. But it's all eyes, of course, going to be on the three main boys, which are Ambrosini, Rijkaard and Baggio. Now, we're actually going to start with Ambrosini because we're going to have a build for him that's pretty decent. With his booster, he's going to be getting a plus two to his aerial, which is going to improve his physical contact, his jumping, and of course, his finishing heading. Now, his finishing and heading, his finishing is kind of a bit of a busted one. You'll notice that Konami will usually give with the booster one or two really good stat uh, boosts and then two that are kind of questionable depending on their position. I think Ambrosini is a DMF, he can also play CB. This guy with 37 levels, that's what kind of kills it for this guy with him being an absolute boss card. Plus, he also has some really good player skills. You can see there, low lofted, weighted pass, interception, blocker, captaincy, fighting spirit. The only thing he doesn't really have is obviously anything in the air. Now, he does have heading, but he doesn't have acrobatic clearance if you're playing in CB. But he's a very, very good destroyer. And he's also got a good baseline of speed, acceleration, and defensive awareness while still having tackling and aggression and defensive engagement and awareness kind of in that same position and um, that same kind of like style. Physically, he's very strong. He's obviously going to be getting the boost as well to heading. So for the build for uh, Ambrosini, we've actually gone for something like this. So I'm just going to show you real quick here. This is the build that we've gone for here. So I'm going to do it in real time. You can choose whether you want to have him as a DMF or a CB. I mean, if you're choosing a DB, even without any of the manager boosts or anything like that, because, you know, um, this still needs to be implemented on this side here. But even without any of the manager boosts, you can see here that once you get a player to 88, they're going to be getting a plus two. Forget about his booster boosters. His booster boosters are just a complete additional boost and stat increase that you don't really need to take into consideration when you're building cards. I mean, if you're depending on the booster of plus four to turn the card from, you know, an absolute monster um, into like a meta player, then obviously it's it's all about how you play with him. But this guy can do it all as a, as a CB slash DMF. He's very physically strong. He's got that 80 speed if you want to uh, if you want to go that route while also having 80 acceleration. Now, if you're going for a CB version of him, you can actually go a little bit more with that. You can go 83, 84 and still have that boost and, of course, still get the defending up with the aerial strength. I would obviously like to see his defense a little bit improve with the aerial strength because you're going to have that jump and physical contact uh, manager boost and his booster boost with the physical contact is going to be plus four. So that's going to make a big difference on this card. But you know, as a, as a CB, this is a pretty boss um, and pretty beastly uh, CB because you've got all your defensive stats where you want them. You've got 85 speed, you've got heading, you've got physical contact. But obviously, I do feel like that this card is going to be more of an all-rounder. He's down as a destroyer, so I do feel that he's down more as a kind of an all-rounder. You don't need much into his dexterity. 78 is more than enough. I think that they've switched up a little bit the defense capabilities of these cards and obviously you don't need to go that defensive if you are going to be using him um in that role you know you can just actually improve his his passing the one big issue is if you are playing him as a dmf or a cmf his passing and his dribbling if you want to go this defensive with his stats i think it's kind of a hard card even though he's got 37 levels i think that you definitely need to have him as more of a kind of like move all around the pitch type player which puts him into the same category as makalele kante those type of cards so i I don't feel like that he really excels the way he should excel because of his his lack of dribbling and tight possession and the fact that it's putting him into that category that's not just like the long limbs of Rijkaard because if you've got Rijkaard here 
Rijkaard is going to be the main man, lads. I think he's going to be the meta shifter, the meta booster, or whatever you want to call it. Hard worker plus two. Increase to aggression, acceleration, physical contact, and stamina. It's a brilliant card. It's down as an anchor man. He's got everything that you could possibly want. I honestly think that Patrick Vieira is the best card in the game, pound for pound. I think if everyone has Patrick Vieira, if you have Patrick Vieira, you can build your whole squad around him. You know, you can score goals with anybody. You can, you know, let in or concede goals with any goalkeeper, Schmeichel or Onana. It doesn't really make a difference difference but having an anchorman and knowing how to play with that anchorman can literally change your game um i'm not saying that people should spin for right card uh, you know that's up to you guys you know but in terms of if somebody is asking me should they get Rijkaard if they're looking for a boss and a beast midfielder then I definitely do think that he is going to be the next kind of big meta player now he did big time player will do a comparison live on the stream later on but this card is phenomenal lads you know he's blocker and interception he can play CB CMF or DB or DMF and of course he's also got some one touch pass and weighted pass player skills but he's also got fighting spirit cut behind and turn and shooting skills so it's a very unique card and definitely he unlocks a lot of those long ling limbed animations so you will notice a lot of the times with Riker of Vieira you're going to have car like animations that the ball will just be attracted to their feet they'll block everything going forward and I definitely think with his booster that that's going to be a big thing as well. Now, looking at his build, there's a couple of builds that we're going to need to get into. That is obviously just a slight uh, build that we have there where it's very, very, very CB DMF heavy while still having 85 speed if you're using 10 hag, which a lot of people are, while still having a bit of acceleration there as well. But his passing is still going to be pretty decent for those lofted passes. And of course, the tight possession is going to be pretty decent as well. If you have 80 tight possession, you're going to have a really good boost to his defensive capabilities. And his speed and stamina is going to be ridiculously good as well for a CB slash DMF. Now, if you're playing him as a, a DMF kind of blocker like the Patrick Vieira role, I don't think you need to go as heavy with the defense. Um, but that's up to you. It depends on how you play. You know, it genuinely does depend on how you play um, because you're going to be getting the booster there as you saw with the acceleration. That means that you only need to put a couple into acceleration, which is about maybe four into dexterity. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's going to give you 71 acceleration with the manager boost and with his boost, it's going to give you a plus four, which is 75 acceleration. So it is going to be a very solid card, I think. Um, I definitely think that we're going to go for Rijkaard. Rijkaard is a card that I missed out on his big time, and I'm not going to miss out on this one. But that, again, that is just a personal preference if you are spinning or not. So that leaves us with Roberto Baggio. And Roberto Baggio has been in Pez before, but he's never been in eFootball. He gets the new booster, Fantastista. Fantastista. And it's going to give a booster to his ball control, dribbling, finishing, and balance. So this is the best possible booster that I think Baggio could have got as a creative playmaker. And of course, he's also going to have brilliant player skills. So he's got soul control and double touch. You'll need to give him flip-flap if you want the advanced double touch or the ball roll or the double touch level three, whatever you call it. And of course, he's also going to have the long-range curler, acrobatic finishing, and one-touch pass, which is nice. I personally would have thought that Baggio would have had a couple of more uh, low-pass kind of um, attributes here. But it is a fairly decent card, I'm not going to lie. It's a fairly decent card as a creative. And when we're going to be training him up with 31 levels, it is pretty decent when you look at his card here, depending on how you want to play him. Now, for me personally, if I'm playing a card in an attacking midfielder role, I 100% want them to have the finishing to be as high as it possibly can, right? I want it to be at least... And I mean at least 85. If it can't go to 85, then I want it to be at least... Um or sorry, if, if it can go past 85, I want it to be 90, you know, because you you may, it makes a big difference to the animations and stuff. If you've got four or five players that have 90 finishing, you can just shoot with anybody once you get those animations down. So if you want to, you can literally just put four into shooting to have 85 finishing. And then also the passing is going to come into it as well with the ball control and the dribbling. You know, you don't need to do much with this card, in fairness, um, to boost it up. Obviously, once you get to that 86 dribbling, you're going to get the manager boost and his booster. And and that's also going to bring up his low pass into 85. Like a lot of people will have, you know, arguments about whether the low pass, um, which he has here, uh, he doesn't get the booster for, or like the low pass at 85 or at 90 is better. For me personally, I think 85 is more than enough. You know, the passing is what it is at the moment anyway. So I don't think that it's going to be that big of a deal to have the pass at 85 compared to 90, especially with the with the role that you're going to be playing with Baggio. He's going to be kind of like a Messi-esque type figure, you know, popping in and popping out. I think the big, the big one for Baggio is going to be his balance 
balance and his acceleration to get that as high as possible and then decide whether you want to get his finishing up a little bit more or you want to throw a little bit more into his speed and stamina personally if you're playing him as an ss or as a, an advanced attacking midfielder I think this build is probably going to be the best for him and then you're going to pop five into finishing that's going to give you 90 plus in pretty much ball control dribbling type possession and finishing and then of course your curl is going to be 90 plus your acceleration and balance are going to be extremely high and of course the speed is going to be nice as well over 85 so there is a lot to like about this card definitely I definitely feel that Baggio will switch it up a lot for people and of course he'll probably play beastly for the first couple of days um when the game is out as well but anyway lads that is it we're back man we're back today we will be live streaming at around 12 o'clock maybe a little before it we're going to be spinning we're going to be testing we're going to be doing different builds with the free reset hopefully if we spin the boys and i hope to see you guys there so don't forget to subscribe and make sure you come and check out the live stream later i will talk to you then peace it's going to be a big one it's going to be a big long one so yeah get in touch